Hello there guys, welcome to a very special video at the moment. Uh, this is my 50 subscriber special. Um, I'm really chuffed that we got to this milestone. Um, it's made even more sweeter in the fact that everyone that subscribed to me is a, um, a Championship Manager fan. Um, so I thought I would do a little video uh, ranking the 20 Premier League clubs from love to hate. And it's kind of going to give you a bit of an insight into how I feel about certain clubs in the Premier League. Uh, just before I start this, Please remember to hit that like button, comment and subscribe. In, in terms of commenting, just tell me if you agree with me or if you disagree with me for any club. Uh, it's completely your choice. Um, yeah, so let's let's make a start on this. So first uh, club here, we've got Brighton and Hove Albion. I don't have any opinion on Brighton and Hove Albion. I really don't. Um, there is absolutely nothing that sort of tells me a reason why I should dislike them. There's nothing that gives me a reason why I should like them. I think what they've done is incredibly good in terms of getting to the Premier League and being amongst the elite of English football. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put those with no opinion. Uh, another one with no opinion, I'm going to put Norwich. Again, um, bit obviously being a Chester FC supporter and living in around Cheshire, um, these two clubs are absolutely nowhere near me. Um, I've got no allegiances at all to any of them. Um, they're kind of like a the boring teams of the Premier League, if I dare say it. I can also add Bournemouth into that as well. Um, and I don't really, you know, have an opinion. Obviously, Bournemouth have just been relegated. Norwich have just been relegated. I can't remember who the third team was that got relegated, actually. I can't remember. It's like Watford. It was Watford, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've been to Bournemouth's ground. We went on holiday there recently as a family. And uh, the ground is incredibly small. They used to play in Division 3 with Chester, actually. And um, the ground hasn't really been developed, I don't think, since then, apart from the pitches on the side. Um, but obviously, Eddie Howe leaving, I, I think they've pretty much, you know, dug their own grave there. Um, let's have a look. So Crystal Palace, um, I'm going to put Crystal Palace as like, and that's simply because of what they did against Liverpool many years ago called Cristambul, where they actually managed to stop Liverpool winning the title uh, by drawing three all. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I loved every minute of it. Um, yeah, that then brings me on to my next team, which is Liverpool. Um, absolutely hate them. Many reasons to this. Um, obviously, living in Cheshire and Chester, there's there's a lot of Liverpool fans, I'm putting up quote marks here, um, that don't actually come and support their local team, which is Chester. And it drives me crazy. There's even, there's even a Liverpool football club shop in the Chester City Centre. And I absolutely I can't stand it. I hate everything about it. I hate the fact that there's so many Liverpool fans within Chester where they could be going to their local uh, club and supporting them. It's a really, you know, annoying thing of mine. So that's why they're going under hate for me. Um, City can join them there. Um, I'm not, I don't really say that there's a lot of um, ex-Chester fans, shall we say, that have gone to watch City. I think that... I just think the way they've sort of established themselves in the Premier League with the money and, you know, all these UEFA things and, you know, getting banned then... Having it revoked just sort of shows that they're above the law, really, in terms of what they can and can't do. And I don't really like that. And I think I'd have to put Chelsea in that dislike. I mean, I don't hate them as much as City, you know. But in the same circumstances as them, when Abramovich came, you know, that's how they really did win the title. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those that you've just sort of got to acknowledge and understand that this is what modern football is going to look like. I think that's why so many people like myself support lower league teams, um, because we don't want anything to do with this type of money. We want, to, we want um, you know, fan-owned clubs. We want, we want what places where we want to enjoy and know that we've had an impact on something, not where we're going to pay £750 for a season ticket and it goes into an owner's pocket. You know, we want to be doing something to help our local community at the same time. That's why they go there. Sheffield United, I'm going to put in love. Absolutely, this is you know everything that I just spoke about. Then epitomizes that Chris Wilder, a Sheffield lad himself, Sheffield man, got them to the Premier League, and not only got them to the Premier League, but got them to a very very good position. I think they just missed out on Europe. I'm sure they did, but what an achievement that is to go up for the playoffs in the season before and then finish where they were. It's unbelievable. So fair play to them. Everton, I'm going to put Everton in the light column, and um, that's simply because. I feel sorry for Evertonians around us. Obviously, there's so many Liverpool fans that the Evertonians do get a bit of stick from them, so it's quite difficult for them at times. And I actually like Everton. I think, you know, and I'm going to put Villa within them, and there's, there's reasons for both of these two. Um, I actually think these two have um, the best stadiums in the league. And, you know, you may say to them, well, Old Trafford holds 75,000, you know. Um, Tottenham have just had a new stadium and all that. 
it doesn't matter. These are old-fashioned stadiums. Everton and Villa, if you ever get a chance to go to them, go. They're really, really good, and um, they just ooze atmosphere. And I think it'll be a shame when Everton, if Everton decide to leave to go to a new stadium. Um, let's just hope that they can keep up with the... Um, with the atmosphere and that brings me on to my next one which is West Ham now they did manage to move stadiums and you look at the Olympic Park and the things that they've moved into and they've managed to honestly it's loud there you think they've got like a racing track around the pitch you think to yourself it's going to be like the old Bayern Munich stadium um, where it was quite difficult to create an atmosphere but they have done an incredibly good job at, um, at being the fans there and just trying to make it an atmosphere for any away team that goes there so yeah I'm putting those in the like just simply because of that um, Southampton absolutely no opinion again um, don't like them don't dislike them that's where they're going there same for Watford really they're another one that goes in there uh, Leicester I'm going to put as like uh, simply because what they did is one hell of an achievement Jamie Vardy as well from the lower leagues um, coming up and doing what he does best it's really really good so I'm, I'm yeah I've, I've got to give him credit where credit's due there um, now United I'm going to put in love which may come as a bit of surprise because obviously I was talking about Liverpool being so local uh, when I was little my uncle used to take me to a few United games and I've been to a few away games with United over the years and um, I must admit you will struggle to find louder fans than United at an away game they are absolutely phenomenal um, and I think that's why I'm putting them in, in my love category because obviously they're not as dominant as they were anymore but the fans are still as vocal and as proud. The only thing where I'd be tempted to kind of put them into this like bit would be the fans as well. So it's kind of like this vicious circle that goes round where you've got the real loyal fans, you know, the ones you know born and bred in Manchester or whatever that, that absolutely adore the team and are really loud. But then on the flip side of it, you've got people in London supporting United I, I, for the life of me, I don't understand. Now, I probably will end up going on a, off on a rant if I continue talking about it, so I'm not going to. But I don't understand people from London supporting teams like United and Liverpool. Take your pick. Look at this list here that we've got all around you. Palace, West Ham, Watford, um, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham. They're all around you. Why are you supporting United and Liverpool? I, I, for the life of me... It's, it's my pet peeve. I really hate it. I can't stand seeing that kind of shit. Like Mark Goldbridge on YouTube or, or on Twitter or whatever. What's going on? Seriously. He's from Nottingham. You've got Forest and County. Take your pick of who you want to support. Support your local team. It drives me insane. Anyway, moving on. Burnley. I'm going to put those in like. Um, now, I've drove past Burnley Stadium many a times um, on away days with um, Chester, and I actually really like the stadium. Now, I know that people say Burnley's a shithole, and when you go in it, um, they're sort of like still, you know, past in the, still in the times of the past, but I actually really like it, and I think um, what's really good is that it's their bread and butter. They absolutely love it. You know, there's no one else but Burnley, and, they're, and they're, it's great. So, yeah, Burnley's got to go in the light column for me. Um, Arsenal, I'm going to put these down as dislike. Um, again, it's the fans. I'm looking at this Arsenal fan TV and I just don't understand it. It's just, it's like with the United stand. I just, it, it's just utter bollocks. I mean, do you know what? I'm bringing United down. I'm bringing United down to like. And that, that the reason why that's happening is because of Goldbridge and the, the fans and the, you know, the Londoners that go there. I'm bringing them down a level um, because the more I think about it, the more annoyed I get with them. Uh, Newcastle. Do you know what? I actually love Newcastle. I think Newcastle fans are really good, and the, and the crap that they've been um, had to had to watch over the years has been really frustrating, especially with Mike Ashley owning the club and this Saudi Arabia bid going into pot. I actually feel really sorry for them because they are incredibly loyal supporters, um, and all of them are up north. They're, they love their football club and they travel home and away. It's it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, Tottenham. Um, I actually have no opinion of Tottenham, surprisingly. Um, I like the fact their football is really good at the minute. I do like that. Um, I, yeah, I just don't have an opinion on them enough to say if I like them or dislike them. You know, the only thing I would say I do like is their football, but... Yeah, we could. Yeah, let's bring them up. We'll put them in the light column just simply because their football is really nice. Um, last one is Wolves, and I'm actually going to put Wolves in the like column as well because I actually like um, 
what Nuno has done there. I think they are a massive team on the up at the minute. Um, what I like about them is they don't just go and buy world-class players. They find players that fit their ta- their type of team and their style of play, which is incredibly... It, it's kind of like... It's quite hard to do that because you, you look at it with United over the years, you look at it with Chelsea where they've just bought superstars and they haven't gelled in. For example, like Di Maria, Falcao, you know, um, you had like Fernando Torres for Chelsea. They, they bought all these players and they just haven't, they just don't seem to gel just because they're world-class players. They thought, oh, we'll get them. But actually what Wolves are doing at the moment is they are bringing in good players like Adama Traore. They've got... Um, Neves as well, and they've got the, the the young lad up front. I can't remember what he's called, but he's banging them. Raul Jimenez, I think. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of respect for them. Anyway, guys, that is my tier. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you agree, if you disagree, if there's anyone that would move up or move down within your um, your list of things here. I'd be really intrigued to see actually what people's opinions are of um, of what I've just said there. So once again, guys, I want to say a massive thank you for 50 subscribers. It's been absolutely amazing. I've actually enjoyed doing this type of video. I might do another one of them. Um, but so much love for you guys. Um, I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later.